All right, good afternoon, everybody. I am gonna give people a moment to join me. Again, this is Ernest Sears. Hi there, Our Lady 1950. Author of Detox Your Circle coming to you once again on Saturday at 2 p.m. as promised. I'll keep doing this until I'm led otherwise. But I have a couple of words for you today um, that came into my spirit earlier this morning that I really want to share. Hi there. And uh, I'm going to wait a moment for a couple of more people to join in. Remember um, that it's nice for you to join and be with me um, synchronously, but um, I always record this and I'll always post it so you don't miss anything I said. Uh, you have the opportunity to comment, you have the opportunity to DM me, uh, send questions. While I'm talking, if there's something that occurs to you, if there's a question that you have or you want to chime in, there's a place at the bottom there if you scroll down where you can actually post your question. Um, and you can also join me on here if you'd like. Uh, if you'd like to post some questions or you'd like to share something that resonates with you that maybe you feel the audience would appreciate it that is welcome I enjoy that I have done that a couple of times over the past weeks and it's been a very very good experience for for myself and the other parties that uh, decided to uh, join me so uh, again a couple of more minutes uh, if you're wondering where I am I'm actually at um, Usury Mountain it is located technically uh, in Apache Junction um, very near um, where I live in Las Indes. Uh we are near the wind cave I think it's called Wind Cave uh, here uh, and I was able to find a spot that's a little bit um, away from all the noise of the people that are congregating at the, the Wind Cave tunnel so as I look around man I could see it's just so beautiful the landscape um, the different colors of green different shades of green hues of green and all the, the cacti and all the other uh, desert landscape uh, that uh, are near and dear to our hearts here in Arizona. Uh, another beautiful Saturday and looking forward to experiencing the rest of it. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying where you are as much as I'm enjoying where I am. Uh, today we're going to talk about a couple of things but I want to summarize a little bit of, about what we've already covered in the past couple of weeks. Uh, I believe we we talked a little bit about the importance of understanding uh, your purpose, understanding who you are in the world, and um, giving other people the opportunity to be who they are uh, without feeling like there's competition or feeling like uh, they're right and you're wrong or you're right and they're wrong. And uh, people have a right to follow their intuition, follow what their strong feelings are, and you don't necessarily have to become embroiled in that. You can allow them to be just be and just um, stay in your lane and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that today um, but basically there are five things I want to cover um, the first thing has to do with knowing how to zoom out uh, we all have the feature of, of zooming out um, and I, I'm not going to go into detail right now but I'm going to list them all so Remembering that as a human, you can zoom out and see the bigger picture at any time, no matter what you're going through in your life. When you're embroiled in these intense situations, um, you can always zoom out and see the bigger picture and, and get a bigger perspective and see how this situation fits into the rest of your life. That's one thing I want to talk about. Uh, the next thing is knowing yourself foundationally. Like what's in your basement and what is, what is the foundation that your whole life, your whole existence is built on. Uh, it's your responsibility to know who you are and why you're here and, and what is uh, really motivating you at your core. And until you really know that about yourself, or at least until you're like pursuing that, then you're really just kind of like wandering and floating around. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about has to do with, again, appreciating the purpose in others. That's the thing I want to go over again. Uh, how important it is to realize that it's not just you that's here with a purpose. There are other people here with uh, with purposes and destinies that may not resonate with yours, that may not be in the same field as yours, but they're still legitimate nonetheless. 
and we have to allow people to be in their lane and understand our lane and stay in our lane and let other people do what they have to do um, and the next one is number four and it's about not being not letting your emotions be hijacked by conspiracy theories uh, and we'll talk a little bit about what that entails and why that's really important today um, if you're human and most of you are <laughs> Um, you are going there are going to be some conspiracy theories that resonate with you there are going to be some some parts of those theories that ring true to you and that's fine you know you're, you're human you're going to have five sentences your senses you're going to perceive those things and um, I'll talk about how you can approach those so so that you can mer emerge from that uh, and still be yourself and not be taken away by the big wave of, of conspiracy theories and the emotions that are actually used um, to 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 really wash us away from our purpose uh, and last but not least I'm gonna touch on the dark night of the soul um, darkness and what does that represent and who are we uh, in darkness uh, what are we supposed to do when we feel that we are now in a place of darkness in our lives when we're experiencing what they call the dark night of the soul so those are the five things I want to cover and I'm gonna do my best not to waste a whole lot of time um, with rambling I'll try to get to each point uh, and move on so um, if you can take notes that'll be great uh, again if you want to chat jump right in uh, if you want to get on with me like some of you did last week do that that's fine okay so the first one uh, zooming out I think it's it's really important to realize that the microcosm and the macrocosm are really the same thing. They're universal laws. One of them is like that says, as above, so beneath, as below, so above. <laughs> so the thing that you're dealing with in your life that seems like it is everything, um, you have to realize that that is just something that you're dealing with that has a greater meaning than what you're able to understand at that time. You are completely um, lost in that situation that you're going through. But one of the best ways, one of the best um, ways to really gain your grounding and get your equilibrium is to zoom out and see the bigger picture and understand that what you're going through has a meaning in the greater picture of your life, in the greater picture of the lives of those that are closest to you. Uh, and so this is something that I learned how to do so that no matter what I'm going through, no matter what challenge or gauntlet I'm having to walk, um, whatever difficulty I'm having to uh, you know, surmount and emerge from, um, I have that, that zoom out feature where I can just say in, in a moment, just kind of zoom out and get a bigger understanding of why I'm going through it and how it fits in with what I've had to deal with in the past and how it fits in with the the road I want to take in the future. Um, it is a powerful feature that we all have, but most of us, when we're in the heat of the moment, when we're in the heat of those trials and tribulations and difficulties uh, with loved ones and, and others in our lives that impact us, we completely forget that we have that ability to toggle between you know, the microcosm and the macrocosm. So this is something that if you are able to make a note of this make a mental note or actually jot it down and meditate it med meditate on it and figure out how you can integrate it into your life and into your practice uh, integrate it into your lifestyle it's going to allow you to no matter what comes your way you're going to always be able to regain your equilibrium to get your balance land on your feet no matter what you're going through because that means you always have your eye on the prize of your vision. Whatever your vision is for your life, that temporary trauma, that temporary gauntlet that you're going through, you realize that it's temporary and that the world is not coming to an end because you're going through this difficult situation. Um, so that is, for me, was a, a great nugget and uh, I'm giving it to you. Um, remembering that you have the zoom out feature just like your camera okay the second thing that I mentioned that I want to talk about uh, has to do with knowing yourself at your very foundation knowing who you are uh, taking some time whether it's in meditation in prayer or uh, consulting with mentors 
are are getting with someone that you you really respect and who knows you and and whose feedback has been um, very uh, valuable in your life digging deep inside yourself and inside your experience to understand who you are number one and why you're here so what I ask myself to get to the bottom of that is what am I always doing no matter what what is always what is that consistent thread that is moving through me no matter what I do subconsciously or otherwise whether I'm in a group or if I'm by myself or if I'm with loved ones or friends what is it that I'm doing what is my unique rhythm what is my unique fingerprint that really can characterize who I am at any given time no matter what I'm juggling no matter how many things I'm doing at once what is that one that least common denominator when you like bring me down to my least common terms when 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 you reduce me down to my smallest atom who am I what signal what am I radiating into the universe and I found that out for myself I know who that is for me I know who I am what, what I'm doing no matter what even when I don't know I'm doing it I'm doing it and then you need to know what that is for you who are you what are you doing who are you being and once you understand that then you can really gauge the degree to which you are moving forward in your life on the right path because you can answer questions about whether or not you need to engage in, you know, uh, some sort of um, something that somebody is doing over here that may be novel to you, that may have gotten your attention. You can decide to what extent you want to participate or involve yourself in that. After you ask yourself, you know, what am I doing? What am I here to do? And how much does that particular initiative or that particular uh, frame of thought or that mindset to what degree does that align with who I am you have to find out who you are and then make decisions about your journey based on whether or not these other elements of life that are going to be coming to you you make decisions based on the degree to which they align with where you're going because you're gonna waste so much of precious life and precious essence if you are making decisions based on just wanting to do the new thing then you don't have a core and you're not grounded so that your life has a meaning so that you're leaving a legacy um, about what it is to be earnest what it is the importance of being earnest that that is that is one of the most important things to me so when I make decisions about what I'm what you know club I'm gonna join or who I'm gonna associate with myself or what project I'm going to engage myself in or how I'm gonna spend my time I owe myself um, to take the time to ask questions about it to find out what whether or not this is aligned with where I want to go because if you find out that it's not aligned then you you might have wasted some time so Know what your foundation, who you are, and what you are bringing to the world. What is the unique medicine that you are bringing to the world? And be able to understand along your journey what is a good use of your time and what is not a good use of your time. And that comes from understanding yourself foundationally, understanding why you are here. And I, I recommend that you, you take the time to do that. It's not necessarily an answer that's going to come to you overnight, uh, you know, over a week over a month or a year it, it could be a lifetime but as long as you are in hot pursuit of who you really are foundationally then you're going to be led the right way and then the universe is going to be able to guide you along the path that is uniquely yours and you're not going to be so susceptible to being hijacked by other people's strong emotions and other people's strong um, devotions to other things that are not necessarily related to anything that you should be doing okay so know yourself um, in a way um, I'm also saying the corollary to that is to thine to thine own self be true but you can't be true to yourself until you know who you are so once you know who you are and you know why you're here then be true to that so um, 
you owe it to yourself to cultivate your gifts, cultivate who you are, cultivate your expertise, cultivate what you're really good at, cultivate your passions, cultivate what makes you feel alive. And that those are ways um, of fulfilling that wise saying, that wise maxim um, to thine own self be true. Okay, next. And if you have any questions so far about what I'm saying or you want to chime in or you want to uh, comment, uh, don't hesitate. I would, I would love to um, hear what you have to say and uh, let you join in if you'd like. Number three, learn to appreciate the life purposes of others. This is, this is something that you, I've, I find is very challenging for anybody to do. You cannot appreciate somebody else's life purpose or journey or unique point of view until you appreciate and understand yours. When you take the time to delve into and dig up uh, the artifacts of your own legacy, of, of your own life, of your own existence, your own history, once you take the time to do that and you have a sense of value and esteem and self-worth after having, you know, going gone through that particular exercise, then and only then are you able to really look at someone else's journey and someone else's purpose with a sense of appreciation, with as if you are observing uh, something special um, that is not necessarily something you resonate with or something that um, has to do with you, but you can appreciate their journey because you've learned to appreciate your own. And I think if we did more of that in this world, I think it would be a better place, literally. Uh, it would be a happier place. Um, you know, I think that um, there's a lot, there are billions and billions of people on the earth and we're really gonna have to, as humans, learn how to coexist. We have to learn how to allow people to be who they are and, and live their own truths uh, without feeling like it automatically encroaches on us. And often people are not really understanding who they are and that's the reason why they're so uh, offended uh, existentially by others who are just living out their lives and in a way that does not encroach on on them but because it's so different from what they're doing and because they're not really rooted and grounded who, in who they are it's almost as if if they feel that this other person's life is somehow gonna leak into or, or negatively impact their lives and that that's just irrational it's not based on fact or logic or anything like that so we have to learn how to let other people live and appreciate their journey without going on it with them right all right so next um, I said I was going to talk about uh, not being hijacked by emotions that are engendered by these um, conspiracy theories um, I said earlier that there are lots of conspiracy theories that um, there is some truth in them. There's always some truth. There's always uh, some aspect of truth that we all can resonate with when it comes to parts of the conspiracy theories. And I'm not even going to give examples. I think there are enough conspiracy theories, theories out today that I don't have to enumerate them or list them. Uh, for you to uh, understand what I'm saying uh, and understand the message that um, I am sharing. The important thing is that conspiracy theories usually are delivered in a package of a lot of emotion. Uh, a lot of emotion behind it. Uh, they are um, packaged in, in, in causes and emotions that humans cannot help but identify with. Um, and you just pick a conspiracy theory and fill in the blank, okay? I'm not going to do it for you. Uh, and so if you are human, then you are certainly going to find yourself susceptible to being swayed by aspects of conspiracy theories that resonate with you. Things that make you go, oh, I always thought about that. And yeah, that sounds true, okay? And that's fine. The issue is that 95% of the time, conspiracy theories are created and manufactured for the purpose of taking you away, of hijacking your emotions and causing you to be a pawn 
on this chessboard, the chessboard of life, the chessboard of, of, of the world. It's like you're being used if you allow your emotions to be hijacked. So what I'm going to say is that go ahead, find the facts that are associated with the conspiracy theories, do your research and, and find the facts and limit your consumption to the facts. To the degree that there are no facts, you have to let that part of it go. If there are no facts to back it up, if there are no facts grounded in, grounding it in reality um, and practicality, then you have to let that part of it go. But the part that's factual, make a mental note or jot down a note, and it's, it's a, a kernel of truth that you might be able to leverage in the future or in your life in some sort of way along your journey. But just allowing yourself to be overtaken and overwhelmed by the emotion like the, a wave, a tsunami of emotion that conspiracy theories are characterized by. Um, it's like, I see them as like a Trojan horse, okay? So you have this conspiracy theory that is created and manufactured for the purpose of overtaking you with emotion. And then you get lost in that emotion. And what happens to people that are not grounded is that emotion takes them with it. And then once that emotion has run its course, whether it's a week, a month, a year, or years, you're left there stranded somewhere where you did not expect to be. And I know that there's some of you out there that, that are finding themselves beached on the shores of, 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 of some nightmare or some place where you did not expect to be because you allowed yourself to be overtaken by this emotion of this conspiracy theorist theory and so what i recommend you do is realize that and this will this was going to be my fourth one but i'm just going to go ahead i mean the fifth one i'm just going to go ahead and integrate this realize that as a human being as a spirit as a soul that you are eternal and whatever weather or whether whether whatever circumstances or issues or emotions come your way they are temporary they are ephemeral they just pass through you they're not you you are not the emotion you are not the circumstance you are not the event you are experiencing it so what we have to do is number one acknowledge wow okay this thing is making me feel a certain kind of way I, I'm noticing I'm you know I can see myself feeling a certain kind of way okay I notice it and uh, let me look into the facts of it okay I find some facts okay then the emotions that are running through you let them run their course understand that emotions are things that kind of like help us uh, have a richer texture to our lives it helps us um, have memories um, our memories are based on the emotions associated with events that we experience in life and so you know when it comes to conspiracy theories allow the emotion of it to run its course and understand that after the storm of this emotion runs through you you still know you who you are you're eternal you are always going to be here in this life and others and so let those emotions go through you and then when it's over be able to land on your feet, be able to land on the ground and take from that experience something that is valuable that can allow you to, you know, expand your vision and, and enrich your life or learn lessons that will allow you not to repeat uh, some things or not to allow some things to recur in your life. That is how I feel about conspiracy theories. Uh, and we're all susceptible to them. Uh, it's just that you don't have to let them overtake and flood your life and overtake every aspect of your life to the point where you realize in retrospect in hindsight that you have veered off the path that you were on okay okay last but not least the dark night of the soul how are we doing on time not too bad okay this is going to take me about five minutes the dark night of the soul darkness is something that um, we've read about in books, we've seen it in movies, um, we've had people uh, share with us maybe before we've experienced it. And if you know, if you've lived long enough, uh, you have had a, a purple patch, or you have had what might be described as a dark night of the soul. Well, what is a dark night of the soul? Well, when you no longer are able to use your 
resources, your faculties, your, your five senses to perceive what is happening. It's as if someone comes into your life and turns all the lights off and you try to use your eyes and you can't see anything, you can't smell anything, you can't feel anything. And um, the dark night of the soul is when you are no longer able to rely on those familiar resources, those five senses to perceive what is actually happening, to understand where you are, to, um, to have equilibrium. And, and these types of experiences come to us um, to expand our our experience to allow us to expand and move into the next cycle of what we're supposed to be doing it is these dark nights of the soul um, that allow us to move into a new cycle it's like a, a, a wormhole that allows us to move into a completely new dimension a new reality and uh, until you have a dark night of the soul experience until you are completely covered in darkness where you look around and try to use the familiar senses to orient yourself and can't do it for a particular length of time you realize that you are forced to grow new appendages you are forced to grow antennae that allow you to perceive with things other than sight you are forced to have faith and grow into something that you never were before. That's what the dark night of the soul is. Another metaphor or synonym for dark night of the soul is a wilderness situation when you are having a wilderness experience where you find yourself all of a sudden in a place that is unfamiliar where you don't have the friends uh, the loved ones the resources that you usually can rely on or fall back on to feel a sense of security um, so a dark night of the soul is also let's say that you are you're driving at night and um, you know that when it's dark and it's rainy and you're on that road uh, and uh, you can you can click on the high beams and you know you're going to be able to see well what happens like what happened to me last night on the way from Tucson I, I take the um, the 79 junction uh, between Oracle uh, and Florence and I got on that road and it was pitch black uh, it was raining hard it was just a two-way road and um, my high beams didn't work so I was basically driving in the dark and so instead of panicking and instead of driving to the side of the road and and waiting for the rain to end which it, it never did <laughs> it just it just kept going I realized that I was gonna have to focus on some other things um, without the high beams I had to begin to see a relationship between that that heavy solid white light white line on the right side of the road and and the um, the dots that were in the middle of the road and I had to come up with a different schema to be able to find my way from Tucson uh, to Phoenix <laughs> and um, at first it was challenging but my eyes began to readjust and um, as I relax and I breathe uh, deeply I was able to get comfortable and and able to see the road in a new way I was able to find my way um, without without hyperventilating uh, without um, losing my bearings and and eventually I regained my equilibrium and and I made it and uh, to me that is just a, a really good metaphor of what happens to us in life from time to time you know that that gift or that expertise that you've been able to fall back on that person that you have that codependent relationship with that you've been able to fall back on sometime in your life those things that are familiar and security to you will vanish and you will be forced to find your way blind where faith is going to be your only way to the end of that gauntlet the the only way to get to that other uh, side of the wormhole so that you now um, see new vistas and a new dimension that will give new meaning to your life purpose so the dark night of the soul uh, is a gift for many people 2020 was a dark night of the soul of sorts uh, and I understand I, I, I'm sure that everybody can understand that uh, but 
these situations that you are forced to deal with are gifts. And as long as you see your life as something of a gift that you are always getting things that are going to be for your benefit, you're always having in front of you roads that are opening up that are going to lead you closer to the vision uh, of your purpose uh, and the meaning of your life, um, those dark uh, nights uh, of the soul and those 2020s that will happen from time to time are going to be embraced more because you're going to understand that you can zoom out and you can see the bigger picture of how it fits into the bigger scheme. You can have that, that aerial, aerial view that allows you to understand how small this experience really is in the bigger picture of your life. So I hope you got something out of that. I really wanted to cover those five things with you today. Those were in my spirit. And um, as I sign off here at Usury Mountain Pass uh, in Apache Junction, uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, this is going to be available for viewing in the next 15 minutes. And uh, do not hesitate uh, to DM me or comment or, or contact me at my uh, account profile. Uh, at dream underscore coach uh, where you can also schedule a time to speak to me uh, in a zoom or an in-person meeting where I can help coach you through some challenging issues in your life or help you uh, figure out um, your purpose help figure out uh, the next direction you want to go in your life I love doing things like that so uh, don't hesitate to use me as a resource okay uh, but until next time uh, this is Ernest Sears author of detox your circle signing off take care it was beautiful. Bye-bye.